is actually the first episode I've ever recorded. Um, so yeah, I hope this doesn't go terribly. Uh, basically, in this first episode, I wanted to talk about something that I've thought about a lot. I've talked about a lot with my friends. Uh, it's a very interesting concept to me. And it is the top television shows that if I could, I would go back and unwatch the episodes as they were airing, as I normally would, and wait until they all, until it all finished and they all came out, you know, on DVD or download or whatever. Basically, you know, get the whole show at one time, binge watch, whatever you want to call it. Shows that if I could, I would do that for. Um, this isn't in any particular order. This isn't like, you know, number one. Uh, this is just just a list a list of eight of them eight of eight of these TV shows. So, anyways, let's uh let's just get into it, I guess. Um, also, I wanted to talk about um the fact that these shows uh are are you know they're not they're not the best of the best. It's not in any way a list of the best TV shows. Just shows that specifically had really great story elements in which watching them on a weekly basis kind of interfered with, I felt like, because, like, you know, maybe I would miss an episode and, you know, I'd have to wait till I could see that episode before I could go back and watch the next episode, or maybe I would just flat out get tired of, like, the specific underarching story arc that was happening and I would stop tuning in and kind of lose sense of the, the the general context of what was going on got distracted by you know life when you have to wait uh you know a week for these episodes to come out so um yeah let's get into this list all right so number one off the bat the first thing probably what made me think of this in the first place is uh Game of Thrones get it out of the way you're gonna think of this this is this is basically Ah, uh, this is this is gold. This is the gold of television. This is something when I started watching this show, or actually when I realized how good this show was, I envied the children of the future, my children, your children, that would see this show in its entirety, beginning to end, be able to sit down for a weekend and just watch this show, because this is just amazing. I, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I watched the first two seasons of this show and didn't know what was going on. I, I, I just watched it. It was fucking awesome. And I tuned in. Everyone was talking about it. I was like, okay, all right, I'll give this a chance. Not realizing that I actually wasn't fucking understanding what was going on in general. I didn't know what the different houses were, who the different families were, what, what, I didn't know what they were trying to do. I didn't know they were, you know, no spoilers in this, in this, uh, what is it, a podcast? I don't know, whatever. No spoilers in this, but I didn't know what they were trying to achieve in that in that wonderful TV show. So anyways, if I could go back and not, because what happened, so I watched the first two seasons, I didn't really understand what was going on, I stopped tuning in, and then um, I think season three came by, and after that happened, um, I didn't watch it, and then after that happened, or maybe it was season two where I did this, I don't know, but I came back, and I missed a season, came back, rewatched the first season, at least, maybe the first two, and plus the season that I had missed from airing, and I realized, you know, what was going on, I, re I wasn't caught up in the hype and the motion of just like, ooh, this week, we gotta see what happens, gotta, it was like, almost like, you know, like, just like, uh, getting getting into the situation that was just set up by the world's perception of it. So, you know, it'd be like, here's an episode of Game of Thrones. You watch it. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know what was going on. So anyways, I got to rewatch it, and I realized it was amazing. I realized it was great, and just how original that show was because I got to watch them one season after another, and that was, oh, that was, that was such a great period of my life. Um, anywho... So yes, Game of Thrones. I almost hate it because there's there's what like one more season, two more seasons. I'm not sure because it's based on the specific amount of books, so they know how much they're gonna make. They know there's only gonna be like one or two more seasons. So it's like in the midst of this, it's like I I want to just erase my memory of it and just stop. It's because it's only gonna be like one or two more years if I just wait. If I but not, it's too late. I've already gotten into it. I can't go back. It's done. All right, number two is going to be Entourage. Now this is this is an interesting one. 
because, well, first of all, I think there's some sort of stigma that only, like, douchebags watch Entourage, which I just don't understand, because I'm not a douchebag at all. I don't... Anyways, so... I just watched this I, from its entirety recently. It ended, um... 2012, I believe. and Yeah, 2012. Uh, eight seasons. Eight seasons deep. A good run. Eight seasons. That's, that's a good fucking run. Interesting thing I noticed about this show. It's an HBO show, but each episode is 22 minutes. I thought that was really interesting. And it actually plays into part why this kind of created an issue. I think, um... I watched it rigorously, you know, week to week, set it up to record or what have you watched on on demand or just watch it when it aired cuz HBO doesn't have commercials, which is awesome. So, yeah, I would, you know, watch that. And then after like, you know, like four seasons or so, um <laughs> So, okay. After like oh, my voice just got hella like stone. All right. After like four seasons, um I stopped watching. I stopped. I got I got tired of like the way that the show flowed and the whole buildup of like waiting a whole week to see what happens and the the um the rhythm the rhythm of entourage is very interesting because it creates it builds a tangible story plot like a really cool plot line around these characters that live in really epic proportions and like really you know, like, epic situations, they're fucking, he's a movie star, they're in Hollywood, they're the top of the tier royalty of America, and it's a very, very, uh, serene lifestyle, yet it builds the story off of the moments in between the phone calls to your manager, the, the little, little details of the negotiation, the mess-ups of a hair when you cut, when he cuts his hair, and then the director's like, fuck, I had to do reshoots, and it fucks it up just because he cut his hair, and you're like, whoa, this dude doesn't really think about the people around him, he just does what he wants, even though it's in this world where everything's so cookie-cutter, uh, epic moments set up for you to view as in the movies, you know, like a really cliche type existence. So that's why I like this from the get-go. It's really cool rhythm. It's all these, all these friends growing up. So yeah, um, re-watching this show episode after episode, I think I did it, I cleared it in like four or five days, maybe, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. But re-watching this, I just got a better sense of what the writer was actually trying to do. Like, when I watched it when it first aired on TV, I didn't really know why it existed. I knew I thought it was cool because I really wanted to be in Hollywood and in the film industry and part of that life. So I'd sit there and be like, oh, it's going to be me one day. <laughs> but, like, now looking back, you know, but then I stopped watching it for a while because I didn't, I was like, why am I watching this? This is just like, am I just sitting here like, oh, one day I'm going to be, no, fuck that. But then I went back and I watched it and I realized, no, this is actually a really good story of, of life. It's realistic. The way they convey it, it's funny. It can be dramatic. It can be intense, but borderline, it's realistic, the way they approach situations. There's name dropping like fucking it. Doug Ellis uh, loves putting himself in it too, um, I'm still, I'm on the fence whether or not it's good or bad how he handles, I think it's cool, you know, he start he, he goes around the route, the route of being like, or like, oh, I'm a dick, but then he kind of solves it in the end, but I don't know, I, I, it's, it was a little too much, the, the Doug Ellis being there, the name dropping, the name dropping gets intense, they do it, and plus there's a lot of, uh, cool actors brought in for specific characters, and it seems like when they take out the character, it's because they don't want to pay the actor to be a reoccurring character on the show, it seems like, um, because they just keep churning them out, and a lot of them, I feel like they could have developed into actual story arcs going on in the midst of it, because generally, the whole show is about, I'm going like ham on this TV, I don't know, this, I'm kind of fucking it up right now, but I'm speaking my mind, yo, so like, the general gist of the show is following, Vince, Vince, Vince fucking starring in movies, and everyone else around him, 
uh, benefits off that. Towards the end, you get Turtle gets some action. Drama has his TV show at the end. You know, he has it in the middle two with five towns. But like most, mostly, you know, ease his manager. Everyone's living off Vince, so it's following that. You know, um, fuck. What was I? Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, if you fucking kept those cool characters like Dom, I felt like would have made a great character to become either a regular or like just a reoccurring dude that would pop up, you know, like him being a security guard. I hate that they had to play him stupid. They had to be like, oh, here's a new character. And I'll admit when I first saw it on TV, he showed up and I was like, ah, oh, this dude needs to just get out of here, dude. He's fucking shit up for my niggas. But then I realized like that's because that's how they were putting him. That's how they're uh, showing him to us as to this fuck up. When he could have made a really cool change up to the... What are you doing, Satara? My dog's eating some plastic. They could have made a really cool change up to the fucking... The, the rhythm of it and just uh, by having this character that is kind of like the epitome of their past the muscle, the bodyguard that, you know, gets kind of intense. Then they could have gone in more in directions and, and not have him fuck shit up all the time. He could have gotten savvy, smarter about things. He could, like, be someone, like, hearing things that people say when he's standing out. Who knows? You could have gone hella different ways and had stuff connect back to that. But, you know, they had him in two episodes. They were burning it out. Just like, oh, and then this is something. To do. Whatever. I wish they'd done that more. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> if I could have gone back, I would have watched Entourage start to finish. I thought it did it better justice. Okay, next TV show is Community. Probably one of the best fucking comedies of the last... I don't even know. This is my generation's Seinfeld, or what the fuck I have ever... This is my generation's, like, funny... So basically what community community uses the idea that um for starters that as long as you address something going on in the reality you're creating with the television series then it will be seen as realistic and therefore funnier um what people make in terms of mistakes a lot of times in any form of comedy is you introduce aspects as a comedic joke but you don't the people involved the characters involved don't address you know the details of that aspect they don't address you know why is this specific thing happening right now but oh well it is because it's reality community does that awesomely plus into things like alternate dimensions and how life is a film abed abed is like my spirit animal and the way that he views the world is just like the epitome of not just me but countless other dudes my age my fucking uh generation what have you he's just the way that people think nowadays which is awesome and great that they actually have a character now in a modern day sitcom or whatever it's supposed to be comedy um that isn't cookie cutter none of these characters are cookie cutter in the sense that they represent qualities of a person merely for the benefit of that archetype it's not like they're just there to be that person it's like they're organic people that have just drifted into this situation and come together which doesn't seem like that from from the surface like i kind of avoided it at first because i was like like, oh, this just seems like, oh, these people, there's the old guy, there's the black lady, and she's older, and there's, you know, the bookworm and stuff. And so I avoided it, honestly. But when I actually watched it, I was like, holy shit, this is fucking dope and realistic and holds to a specific attention for the actual plot and storyline of how they got there. I loved how at the end of the series they went back to the beginning of how they all met up and 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 met through specific occurrences that made them happen to meet all because of actions Abed had done and like he was like, Whoa, oh my god, you know, like, it's fucking great. So yeah, um great show, great comedy. If I could have Watch this all at once. Ooh, that's just going to be... Uh, I take it back. I take it back. It was not Game of Thrones that encouraged the idea of 
of taking back episodes you could watch all at once. It was, in fact, this show, Community. I was wrong. It was Community. Because this is just going to be great. This is such a, like, you have the flu, maybe. You're homesick. Maybe you broke your fucking leg or something. And you go on Netflix, which in the future will be, like, Third Eye Netflix. And it's just, like, in your brain. You go on, you check out shows. You're like, what is this? This is from, like the 2000s is hell old and then you put it on it's fucking it's fucking three four how many seasons is it like four i think i don't fucking know it's great seasons of fucking awesomeness hilariousness great character development and it's a comedy it's so rare you get character development and story and and background and and plot with a comedy it's great so the next one on the list is, sorry, I'm sick right now. Uh, the next one is going to be 30 Rock, an amazing show starring Tina Fey. Okay, so this show is another show that, I'll admit, I avoided at first. Um, did I say avoided? Yeah, avoided. But then I checked it out from a friend's suggestion, and it's really fucking funny. Um, now, this one... Is very similar in community. I mean, this is just a great fucking show. Actually, I don't really think this should be on the list because all these episodes, all of 30 Rock is just like almost standalone. Like, it's just awesome fucking. It's almost like SNL if SNL was all scripted and funny. But yeah, I'm taking this off the list because. You can watch any fucking episode of 30 Rock and it's just great. It doesn't even barely have to be in order. So, fuck that. Next one is Supernatural. Supernatural is dope as fuck, nigga. Anyone says anything different, I'll fucking cover you in salt. So, dude, alright. Supernatural. Ah, oh, man. I've been watching it since the beginning. Uh, at first, I was questionable at first, it was on the fucking CW, or maybe it was even WB at the time, I don't know, I was watching it, I was like, ah, is this gonna be another, like, weird fucking, uh, you know, like, dudes on the WB just, like, doing shit because they're, like, models and girls think they're hot and stuff, but no, this is a fucking real-ass TV show, this shit has character development, it has plot development, it has, it successfully introduces new characters, which play their part in a plot successfully, and then some of them actually get out of the plot successfully, and not like cliche and shit, and it's amazing, because it's a fucking like, I wouldn't call it sci-fi, uh, s supernatural, suspense, what is it called when it's mystery and suspense? No, I don't know. It's a fucking cool-ass supernatural show. There's demons in it. And once you get later on, there's angels, too. And I remember when I first watched it, I was just like, where is this going? I watched it on TV, episode by episode. I was like, where is this going? And there's fine demons. What the fuck? Sometimes I would miss episodes because, like... Each of these seasons are, like, 22 episodes. So you get into this mode where you're just, like, new episode of Supernatural... I almost just, like, stop tuning in sometimes, or I put it on, and I just don't pay attention, because, you know, I was in, like, middle school, and I'd be running around and shit, doing what the fuck ever, or just not paying attention, who knows, I wouldn't pay attention, and I was just, where's this going, and, uh, I stopped watching it, then, just, like, a year ago, I watched it on Netflix, and I watched all the seasons that I'd missed, which I think were, like, three or four, so I had a good chunk of fucking Supernatural to suck on, and I was just fucking chilling, watching that shit, watching the character development, watching the plot, uh, delivery development, cause it's, it, it, w it would be really easy for this TV show to be a fucking monster of the week, fucking let's go kill the monster, have a vague goal in the background that they never fucking accomplished like a hundred other fucking TV shows out there, which is what I thought they were doing, which is why I stopped, but they don't fucking do that, they have one you know, thing they're striving for, no spoilers on this, one thing they're striving for, and... They fight to get that in the first, like, maybe season or two, and that just fucking is the, not even the tip of the iceberg, that's, like, the fucking front door to the building that leads up to the fucking tramway system that takes you over to the theme park, like, 
And it's just amazing how in-depth they get with it, how much they go into the universe, how much they follow their own lore, how much they flip it on themselves so that, like, they show you that they're aware that you're aware of this world that's aware. So it's real, and it's developing, it's fucking awesome, and yeah, five thumbs up. So, next one is Smallville. Smallville is a very similar situation. Uh, CWWB uh, thought that it was just going to be a super villain of the week type superhero TV show, um, which it kind of was. It kind of was uh, at the beginning when he was first like learning about his powers, and they're just kind of like, we need people from the fight to be like, oh, I need to develop these powers so that I am better and I learn my powers. And he was just, you know, he's like Bambi at the beginning. But it was cool. I actually liked the beginning more than later on. Like when it was that wall of weird shit, the wall of weird status, OG Smallville. Fucking, I'm talking Pete, my nigga. Like, old school, OG, high school ass Superman. That shit was dope. That was cool. And then it started getting hella weird with, like, oh, no spoilers. Fuck. Okay. Um, well, it got weird with its characters the way they took it. I think they had us, I'll just say, I think they had a. They had an awkward goodbye to Lana's character. And I'll tell you what, I think it was because they wanted to get a little lady in there called Lois Lane. And they just kind of wrote off Lana. Um, But whatever, won't get into that. Um, Yeah, Smallville, I did the same thing with recently. I stopped watching it about halfway through the seasons, maybe three quarters in. And then recently I was like, you know what, that show's done, so I'm going to knock off the rest because I fucking love comic books and DC and Superman specifically. So I just watched all the rest of the fucking episodes. Um, realized that they fucking got awesome too. I fucking I literally stopped watching Smallville. Like there was like maybe like one season, half a season that was like kind of awkward. But like directly after that season, um, it just got fucking on its toes. And I think it's because they realized that hey, this isn't fucking Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeves, Christopher Reeves, my bad, I don't know, um, this isn't that, this isn't fucking any other thing going on, this isn't the comic books, so chill out comic book dudes, this is just fucking our own universe, our own Earth 53, or what have you, and they just went that direction, so they stopped worrying about it, and I think also, Tom Welling got used to, you can almost see it in his face, when he realizes, oh shit, I'm never gonna fucking wear the fucking costume, I'm, I'm gonna keep getting these paychecks, keep getting them dollars, keep being Clark Kent, the uh, Superman, which he basically was, especially to, oh, it's awesome, that was like, I had an action figure of him at the end of Smallville, you know, he, he wore that specific costume, um, fuck it, I'll say it, the black costume, a lot towards the end, which I think is doper than his real costume. I had that action figure. That was my favorite Superman action figure when I was little ever. Dope shit. So that was cool, you know, like, they took it from a side angle. I think that was, it made it all the better for you not seeing him in the main costume. Because once you do, it's like, and you're like, okay, but you just had that black one. That shit was dope, and it makes sense, because it's like, you know, he's wearing black. He doesn't want to be seen. Yeah, so that was cool. Watch it again. It gets really dope towards the end, and that does a pretty good job of saying goodbye, I'd say. You know, it wraps it up. You know, it doesn't It doesn't quite do justice to the main fans, like the fans from day one. It doesn't do enough of that, like... But fuck it, no, it's good. I would love to watch that show all at once on DVD in one sitting, which I'll probably do in 10 years when I've forgotten anyways with all of these. Okay. All right. The next one on the list, the penultimate one on the list is Angel. This fucking badass fucking show motherfucker. I think I started watching, did I start watching this show on TNT, like the reruns of it? 
like I don't think I saw this from the beginning because I was too young when it first started but then I caught on to it I would watch it on TNT like when I got home from school immediately like, oh this is badass as fuck like me and my homie we would just talk about it all the fucking time and then I started watching the new episodes when it came on I think WB I think is the channel that it uh, aired on non-syndication um, and that was fucking awesome again it got it was a victim of the whole hey, you're showing this on a week-to-week basis, I mean, fuck, most people can pay enough attention to to watch stuff when, I mean, you know, when I was little, you know, before a DVR era, you know, you can't fucking go off and just watch anything every single week, shit's gonna get in the way, so you might miss an episode, specifically with Angel, very plot-driven, you know, they would switch things up, a good amount of the time and it would develop but it was also really driven by plot all that intention everything that happened specifically was weighing on the characters and they fucking developed they turned into like diamonds like fucking pressure on charcoal and like they fucking just like it was awesome you know to see these characters develop it, oh man the, the the way wade is that's his name right wade Oh, the, the British dude. Okay, I haven't seen it in a while. My bad if I get this shit wrong. So, like, the way his character changed, I didn't see it until I saw, like, the, the middle on and then started seeing the beginning part. So, I had no idea about his whole backstory. That's a crazy fucking character development. But that's just the beginning. But, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this that show is fucking dope. Um, if I could have gone, I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I, it's so good. I was fine with piecing it together kind of and making up for it. Eventually I watched it on Netflix over again and I finally got to see those early episodes that I'd miss and I was like, fuck, this is so good. Why didn't they finish this? Ah, apparently they canceled the season like halfway through at the end. So they had to put all of that shit into fucking like half a season i hate when they do that especially when it's a good show and you're just like what this is not the show that i love the pacing's all off the end you know they're ah oh, fuck but anywho that's a great ass show i think there's like six or seven or fucking eight seasons of that five five seasons i think it's five it's five or six but it's great there's a lot go check it out it's great if you like buffy i mean it's kind of like a darker version of buffy if that's even doable because Buffy's like the first mainstream dark TV show there was. But Angel, yeah, it's like LA, dark, cool, leather jacket. All right. The last television show on our list, and I'm sure you've been talking about it a bunch these days, is Breaking Bad. Of course. Duh. All right. So here's a show I did watch from the start, actually, and. I was like, this is pretty cool, you know, I hate meth, I hate fucking everything associated with it, I hate when I look at it, it makes me feel uncomfortable, it's weird, but when I saw this show, I saw it and I was like, whoa, that looks like candy, because it's so fucking blue, and that's why Breaking Bad is a good show, no, so, this it's just fucking awesome, it's the way they handle it, the realism, the way, that you, I don't even have to sell you on this show, same issue, missed some episodes, uh, couldn't fucking, couldn't place it together, so driven by fucking plot and character development, oh my god, you miss one episode, everything's different, fuck you asshole, wait till it comes out on DVD, you know, so fuck that shit, I guess there's on demand, but I just, I hate that, I hate having to like, go back and stuff, I'm at the point, ever since Arrested Development dropped season 4 in one go, I'm like, Psh, Y'all gotta step the fuck up because now I don't have to go root around and look online and stuff for episodes that I miss if it's not on on demand or what the fuck ever. I can just wait. I can just wait till it all comes out on Netflix or on DVD and watch it all at once. So stop playing it on TV. That's the lesson, guys. That that is the message of this whole fucking shabam. Stop playing stuff on TV. Fuck commercials and their fucking mind zombifying bullshit ass shit. Just stop it. Turn fucking television into one giant Netflix menu. You fucking go around. There's streams. Like there's not not even streams, but like you go around and put all the episodes from the season up at the beginning. And it's on your on your channel's menu. 
and then you watch it whenever you're ready. Or you could even do it at the beginning of the week, and that way people can watch it at any point. If you want to do a middle ground, don't want to put it all out at once, do it at the beginning of the week. Okay, so that's my list. It's the first episode of Nigel Speaketh. Have a good day and stay illuminary. illuminary.